death. It can strike without a moment's notice. A young person, full of life in the morning, can be gone forever by the end of the workday. A father takes his last breath as his heart gives way unexpectedly. A mother dies during a routine operation. A sister with cancer. A brother in a car wreck. A fall. Old age. War. Death is a relentless foe. It hunts us until it has each one of us in its grasp. Our cemeteries testify to the fact that our battle with death is a losing one. Death always wins. Death is coming for you. Are you ready to go wherever death takes you? Some believe that nothing happens after we die. We just cease to exist. Others believe that there is a heaven and that all but the really bad go there. Still others believe that there is a God who will judge man according to his works and allow the good into heaven and send the bad to hell. Are any of these views correct? How can we know? Where can we turn for answers? Nearly a third of all the people living on earth today say they are Christians. That means that they take the Bible as their holy book and consider its writings sacred. But even many Christians are not fully aware of what the Bible teaches on this most important subject, death. Why should we consider the Bible's point of view? There are a few things that commend the Bible. First, virtually every prophecy written in the Bible has already been fulfilled. This is in stark contrast with other religious writings which contain no fulfilled prophecy. The Bible tells of events that would befall Israel as a nation. It tells us that in the last days, every man would be numbered before being allowed to buy or sell. Far-fetched? Not anymore. For what other reason should we consider the Bible's point of view? The Bible has its roots all the way back to the earliest recorded history of man. It takes its place with the earliest recorded writings and this book has given comfort to billions in every age. This book has life-transforming power. People have died for the words and the message in this book. Finally, and most importantly, we believe this book when it claims to be the very words of God. So what does the Bible have to say about death? Does it have any answers about this dark and mysterious subject which casts a pall over all men? Yes, one of the major themes of Scripture is the subject of death. We find death in the first chapters of Genesis and in the final chapters of Revelation. The Bible has good news and bad news about death. Let's consider the bad news first. The Bible says that death is not natural. God did not intend for man to die. Death is a curse on man for his rebellion against God. God gave man the world in a perfect state, but man rebelled against God. If we take the Ten Commandments as a basic outline for God's standard of righteousness, we quickly find that each of us is guilty of breaking some or most of these commandments. Prohibitions on stealing and killing are in there, but so is lying, dishonoring our parents, making idols, adultery, and failing to worship the only true God. Many people believe that there are big sins and small sins, and that as long as you haven't killed anyone, you'll probably go to heaven. Unfortunately, that is not what the Bible teaches. Ezekiel 18.20 The soul that sinneth it shall die. The wages of sin is death. The bad news about death is that it is a result of sin, but it gets worse. Man dies physically because of sin, but there is a coming judgment because of sin in which man will be sentenced to spiritual death in a place the Bible calls the lake of fire. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, 
shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Do you believe that? The death that we see all around us in this wicked world is not the end, but it certainly testifies to the fact that God must mean what He says. God has promised eternal torment for sinners. Based on what we've seen so far, do you believe that you are a sinner? Instead of giving yourself the benefit of the doubt, why don't you truly scrutinize yourself and ask yourself if you could be in danger of God's coming judgment? Only when you stand in doubt of yourself and seek to find a remedy to your sinful condition will this next part make any sense to you. And that is the subject of this video. The meaning of the term gospel. The Greek word gospel means good news. And having considered the sobering subject of death, we need some good news. The good news is that God loves man. He loves men, women, and children so much that He Himself took the penalty of your sin and mine. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. You and I are sinners, but Jesus never sinned. Even His enemies could find no fault with Him. Because He was perfect, His death was undeserved. It was a substitutionary sacrifice. He died in your place. He died the death that we should have died. Men naturally believe in substitutionary sacrifices. In the most uncivilized places, we find man offering the blood of animals to appease their gods. They believe that something or someone else can die in their stead. But the news gets better. Jesus died, was put in a grave for three days, and rose again. After His resurrection, He was seen by multitudes of people who testified to the fact that He was alive after death. The Apostle Paul testified to that fact this way, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas, or Peter, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Do you believe that? Friend, let me ask you something. Are you tired of your sin? Have you ever wanted to be clean from the evil things you've done? Does death and what lies beyond frighten you? You can have peace with God today because Jesus Christ died in your place. That is the meaning of the term gospel. The good news is that Jesus Christ offers pardon to sinners he can blot out every transgression and desires to do so. He can give you a new start on life. Throw yourself on God's mercy. Openly confess your sin to God. Plead His forgiveness on the basis of what Jesus Christ did for you. John 6:28. Then they said unto Him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. <laughs>